I would see honestly, I, I would see the unconventional resources as, as a target for KOC, but more towards the 2030 strategy for them, because I believe KOC on the right track to reach their uh, 2030 uh, strategic imperative, and uh, they have been working relentlessly over the past few years about it. Right. But uh, uh, the unconventional resources is going to be adding the reserves that's needed to sustain because to reach the target of 4 million barrels per day uh, is a challenge by itself that QC has proven uh, they are more than capable of uh, doing and achieving. If you go beyond the 2020 until the 2030 strategy and then you realize that you are going to the challenges of sustaining it, whether from a water uh, management perspective, from you are, from all the challenges that, that, that you will have. So you will you will be required to, uh, to drill more and also the unconventional resources will be adding more stream to the production that yeah. can cover up you know any uh, any change in, in, in the production uh, for it and this is directly tied up to the reserve the more that you find the reserve in there the more that you strengthen your plans to the future mm -hmm. so there's a future for hydro tracking hydro treating in kuwait exactly yeah. but i think from the current down cycle uh, i wouldn't call it down cycle in particular kuwait doesn't see the down cycle because they are really investing when the cycle of the oil is down mm -hmm. Uh, I think it's working economically and there's a business mindset extremely well uh, for it. But if, with the current oil prices and the reduction, there is a lot of effort has been put uh, from all the uh, companies, especially the ones that work with the uh, shale gas and shale oil in the US and, and uh, all the players in the unconventional resources segment to reduce the cost. And they have done significant in that and they will continue doing it because we believe that the future is going to go more toward cost effective solutions. Mm -hmm to bring the lifting cost of the oil down and make the, uh, you know, the oil and gas the reliable source of uh, energy even going forward. So the lifting cost element is going to be there. The innovation is going to continue, the technologies are going to continue, which is all toward cost optimization even of developing the, uh, the what you call it, the uh, unconventional resources. It definitely adds into the strategies. Uh, now to say, uh, are we going to see an immediate impact for it? Uh, remember the the exploration that QC is going to do in the uh, uh, in the offshore uh, for it is basically to experiment the potential and to determine reserves. It's, it's an exploration phase, uh, actually, in the areas that they have selected uh, for it. So I would say it's more falling toward the 2030 strategy, more falling toward the prospect evaluation and exploration strategy for KOC uh, in terms of adding the reserve and exploring the potential mm -hmm. for the uh, fields. Uh, gas is a critical uh, need for QC, so they may end up, you know, with the discovery of additional gas uh, reserves in there. You never know. So all is really dependent on the uh, on the outcome that they get from the uh, completing the exploration phase of an offshore. I believe it's very critical for QC because and and you thinking the longer term and the strategy for it uh, for QC to meet the 2030, they will have to go to the exploration of the. Uh, the offshore, along with the rest of the prospect evaluation explorations and on, on onshore uh, for it. Now, for the second part, which is related to the surface uh, companies, uh, we're very well prepared actually uh, for the offshore. Uh, as an international surface company, already Baker Hughes works in, in two of the uh, you know the spotlight uh, offshore operations uh, with tough conditions. Uh, whether an HBHT uh, level uh, and even from logistics and uh, and uh, offshore support uh, perspective as well. I'm talking about the Gulf of uh, deep water, Gulf of Mexico, and I'm talking about the North Sea uh, for both of them, where the footprint and presence of Baker Hughes is extremely strong uh, in both of them with expertise. Surface providers, uh, I think they're going to rely more on the global expertise or the regional expertise that they have in working in offshore. Uh, bringing these expertise into the country, you know, to help and work with KOC uh, and kicking off the uh, offshore phase. Well, if, if you really think about it, it's more about cost optimization at the moment, right? If, if the cost involved to set up uh, a project uh, is, is more beneficial now to start it, then it's it's the better idea. Contrary to what people typically believe, is that uh, no, you know, like uh, 
The return on investment is not going to be good because we are in a down cycle. However, in order to do a certain projects, you're required to put certain costs. And these costs probably would be much higher uh, in a normal cycle if, if the oil prices were back to the 100, exactly. So uh, I, I really uh, believe that QC and KBC both are making the right decisions in terms of, of continuing the cycle of uh, investment. And it, uh, it's going to be more cost effective. Uh, for them in the longer term, it's going gonna, it's gonna to show off, and it's going to prepare the country in a position to to be able to supply uh, the additional demands once you know down the road once the uh, demand for the oil comes in. And on top of it, I think the uh, projects like the heavy oil and the offshore both are, are comes from strategic mm -hmm. perspective. And when you're talking about strategic uh, vision, uh, execution of strategic vision and longer term, uh, you know, prospects, uh, then uh, cost is not the only determining factor. For Baker Hughes Kuwait here, the first thing that comes really in mind is the local content. We have invested very heavily uh, over the past few years uh, doing our social cor uh, corporate social responsibility collaborating with Kuwait University uh, by taking their students with the, with the uh, Institute of Applied Sciences. We strengthened the relationship in there. We have uh, taken a lot of uh, interns and to the board of Kuwait is to introduce them to the uh, service uh, side of the business, uh, being a service provider and business partner to uh, KOC. Uh, we also continue investing on the local content in Kuwait here, and we have uh, some of the great, uh, you know, workforce, uh, Kuwaiti national workforce, that works hand in hand with the experienced international uh, workforce that we have, diverse workforce that we have here in, uh, in Baker Hughes uh, in general. Something that we are really very proud of, and we're going to continue investing in it because we believe that the, the really the future of Baker Hughes Kuwait is going to continue in there having you know the best in class in terms of the personnel that we are proud of that we invest in developing them the local content that's really you know going to be the foundation for building baker hughes in the future uh, here and carrying it even uh, forward and uh, looking even to the toward the time where we're going to increase you know the uh, the participation of the local content to even higher level we're pushing hard uh, into it and uh, it's proving extremely rewarding extremely very well and makes us proud actually of the Kuwaiti workforce that we have here uh, in terms of business uh, we have established a great relationship over the past decades with uh, QOC we strengthened it even more uh, in, in the last few years uh, of business uh, partner with QOC uh, I think we became you know uh, very strong partners that we understand each other, we understand, we share the same strategic objectives, uh, we line up with our uh, customers and their needs, uh, establish a very strong relationship, track portfolio, trust, flawless execution, that we're going to continue building uh, on it. We see the future uh, and the potential is high mm -hmm. in Kuwait, and we are gearing ourselves in terms of investment and building you know, uh, a portfolio of newer technologies that's going to best uh, help uh, KBC and QC meet their uh, objectives and fit for purpose solutions for it. So we're going to continue uh, the investment cycle. We are very positive about the uh, future of Kuwait uh, on it in all aspects. And uh, we already have uh, invested heavily and continue to do so to make sure that, that we are meeting along the road the 2020 and 2030 strategy for QC along with the work for it. You're going to talk about uh, the position of Kuwait in the eyes of the region. Let me start by saying the position of Kuwait in the eyes of the corporate. Uh, all the way, you know, from the uh, Houston corporate level uh, with the CEO and the global uh, presence of operation for Baker Hughes to the region uh, headquarter here. Uh, they always have put Kuwait, you know, as, as the spotlight and bright spot, you know, for the businesses uh, because they know the stability of the business goes far beyond the fluctuation of the oil prices in Kuwait because Kuwait has a strategy that's determined to go forward. And this strategy uh, that they have uh, for it is basically they are executing it very well and along the road and, and they have been very transparent and communicating it to their business partners. And uh, that gives us the uh, the incentive and the excitement, you know, to continue working with uh, with uh, QOC, and foresee Kuwait in general, you know, as as a very strategic uh, partner to us and a business partner okay. to us. 
and they are fully supportive from the corporate and from the region headquarter uh, to uh, the Middle East uh, gym market to uh, continue supporting us and KOC for, uh, to meet uh, you know, the future expansion plans and demands.